All right, so today we're going to be talking about uh, some of the expectations that Dr. Benzer in the office has when you interact with a patient. Um, first of all, many of the patients who come here are actually longtime patients. And so while it might be your first time meeting them, they are actually, you know, here for the seventh, eighth, maybe 20th, 30th time, right? So they kind of know what's going on and they might kind of view this place as a very friendly place. They might know Ramiro very well. They might know Bagat very well and other people very well. And so they kind of expect a more familial or conversational approach in this place. And that might be different from other offices in that respect and that a lot of the patients here are treated as if they are family. So when you go into a patient's room, even if you've never met them before, it's very important that you go in acting as if they are almost a member of your family. Certainly you want to smile, you know, you want to be happy that they're here. Um, always ask, you know, how are you doing today? How have you been? Uh, things that you would ask, again, somebody that's close to you, as if, you know, you want to actually know how have they been, what have they been up to. Um, you know, if they say, for example, that they've, you know, recently gone on a vacation, it's okay to ask, oh, how was your vacation? Where did you go? Right? Um, the, while we stress, you know, in school, you know, to kind of keep it focused and keep the interview short and to the point about medical related stuff. Uh, here in Dr. Benzer's office, we like to try to open up a little bit more and again, make patients feel very welcome. Um, and that just makes them overall have a better experience. So again, smile at them. Uh, when you see them, uh, you know, make eye contact, you know, don't obviously stare them down. Uh, but, you know, be friendly, have friendly eyes in an essence. Um, if there's a seat in the room, you know, sit down, try to be at their level. It, don't be standing over them, hovering over them, uh, you know, acting as if you're in charge of them. You know, act more very humble, very gracious that they're here, and always be calm and approachable. Now, um, it's okay to put, you know, a hand on their shoulder or something like that or give them a handshake. Um, always tell them your name. If you're not sure of what their name is, don't just stare at the computer screen um, and try to, you know, misspell their name or missay their name. Uh, you know, nobody would like that. That would be more like you're interacting with a stranger. So just Again, act as if you already know them. Say, oh, hi, hello, how have you been, right? Um, and just kind of go from there. Act. A lot of this is acting, again, as if you do know them. Even if, again, it's the first time you've met them, you're not even really sure why they're here, you can still jump into a conversation with them, okay? Make it also a very... Uh, good conversation, okay? Don't just jump straight into asking questions of, okay, hi, my name is Saul, and I'm going to ask, okay, do you have any chest pain? Do you have any palpitations? You can ask them, again, how have you been? Oh, it's good to hear that you're feeling very well, so you haven't had any problems at all, no chest pain or anything like that? Oh, that's great to hear. No dizziness? Wonderful. Okay, so, or if they say, oh, I've had, you know, I was a little tired last night, you can, again, empathize with them and say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, you know, did anything happen last night? And certainly be sincere about it, okay? And then say, oh, okay, so were there any other symptoms you were feeling last night? Were you having any chest pain at all? Any dizziness when this happened? Again, make it more of a conversation. Don't just act as if you're reading off of a list. It's also very important when you're interacting with a patient, again, to make sure that they know what is coming next, okay? So again, you, you wouldn't just leave your family member in a room all alone without them knowing, you know, what's going to happen next. So always be sure to let them know. If, for example, you're going to go talk to Dr. Benzer about, you know, what you've just heard from them, let them know and say, okay, it was wonderful talking to you. I'm just going to step out for a moment. I'm going to go talk with Dr. Benzer and I'll be right back to decide where we can go from here. Um, if, you know, they have 
a lab that they're getting today or a procedure that they're performing today. Dr. Benzer might tell you, for example, that they're going to get an EKG this afternoon. Don't just let the person who's doing the EKG come and pick them up. Always pop back in for a second and say, okay, I talked to Dr. Benzer. We're going to get an EKG today. The person who's going to come and do the EKG will be in in just a minute. Um, and hopefully I'll get to see you, you know, before you leave again today. And again, that way they know what's coming. Now, you should, again, always smile, always remain calm, always be very friendly. Some patients are going to be frustrated or they might, you know, have some issues that they might be slightly angry or upset about something. Okay, it's very important that when that occurs, you don't take it personally. Okay, don't assume, you know, it's something about you. Also, don't assume it's something about them. That is, don't think it's, oh, they're just a mean person overall. Oftentimes, when most people are upset or they're frustrated, they actually have a good reason for it. Uh, many patients travel a far distance to get here, so they might have been stuck in traffic for a long time. And obviously, if you were stuck in traffic for a very long time, you might be a little frustrated as well. You, you're just going to be, you know, upset because you've just waited so long and then you get here and maybe this new person you've never seen is asking you a lot of questions, right? So again, just be polite. Say, you know, you can understand how that, you know, sitting in traffic for so long can be very frustrating um, and that you're glad that they're, they're finally here and that hopefully, you know, it was that you can kind of take advantage of the time you have now and that hopefully this doesn't happen again in the future. Um, they might be frustrated again because they have medical problems. Um, that they're not really sure about or they might be taking medications. They're not sure why they're feeling things and they're not sure why they're feeling things and that can be both very scary as well as very frustrating. So again, when you're talking to these patients, um, always remain calm. Don't take it personally. Try to figure out, again, why they're feeling that way. You can ask them, oh, I see you're kind of upset today. You know, is there something you want to talk about? Um, you know, be humble. Uh, always acknowledge uh, their feelings and empathize with their feelings. Let them know, you know, I think anybody, you know, who has sat in traffic for that long would be very frustrated. I know I would certainly feel that way if that were me, right? Um, if they're upset with something about the office, say um, they've called three times uh, to try to schedule an appointment and nobody has been able to schedule the appointment, apologize, right? Let them know that you're very sorry about that, that, you know, obviously we have their best interests at heart. Um, sometimes things can happen, but that's really no excuse. Um, and that we will do everything we can to make sure that they feel appreciated, to make sure that they get done what needs to be done, okay? Um, one of the big things patients can often be frustrated about is the fact that we have to ask them every time about their medications. Some patients come in very, very frequently. They might have just been seen yesterday. Uh, but yet we still have to ask them, you know, about what they're currently taking, how often they're taking it, and the like. And a lot of patients may just say, but I just told you this yesterday, and become frustrated about that. Just politely let them know, again, that why we ask them about their medications is because even though 99% of the time it doesn't change, we want to be aware of that 1% of time that it does change, right? We don't want to miss that one person who might have changed their medicine just last night because, you know, they might have talked to another doctor over the phone or they might have taken something over the counter, right? We don't want to miss that because a lot of these medications can interact. And so what that means then is that we need to be aware of that in order to help them. Right? Always let them know that whatever we're asking is really for them. Right? We're not just asking it to be mean or cruel or just for our own benefit. We're always asking it so that we can form a plan together with the patient on how to best solve their problems. That goes again as well for the five general questions we often ask people. You know, have you had any syncope, any chest pain, any um, dizziness? 
Again, try to get those into a conversation. Um, but also, again, if they kind of, you know, aren't very conversational and you just kind of have to ask that, again, just let them know. We just want to double check, be sure, because we don't want to miss any case where somebody might be having a symptom that's more serious than they realize and we have their best interest at heart. Okay? These issues, again, of being humble, remaining calm, um, being polite, apologizing, apply not just to when you're interacting face-to-face -face with a person, but also when you're taking calls over the phone with a person. Oftentimes, a person can call and be upset about something or frustrated about something. For example, they might uh, have not have been able to pick up their prescription at the pharmacy, and they've called several times about it. Again, over the phone, be very calm. You know, let them know we have their best interest at heart. And again, tell them that you're going to get to the bottom of it. Let them know that, you know, you're going to focus on this issue. Ask them, you know, if they can call back, for example, in a couple hours because you want to focus on this issue for the next couple hours, try to get it resolved so that the time, by the time they call back, you will have it already set up. Now, obviously, if there's ever, you know, a situation that the patient is extremely upset, extremely frustrated, you always want to let Dr. Benzer know um, so that he can also address the patient as well. Okay? So if there's ever a situation where you feel uncomfortable or, again, it's just kind of one of those extreme situations, definitely let Dr. Benzer know so that he can address it. Finally, when you're ending a visit, it's always very important to, again, be gracious that they came, um, say that you were so happy to see them, that you hope to see them again. Um, a lot of the patients know that we are just students on a one-month rotation, that they see various people again. So it's okay to say, oh, I hope to see you again, you know, before my time is up here or something like that. Um, hold the door open for them as they leave. And again, just kind of be polite and gracious about it um, and treat them as a family member. Okay? So good luck on your rotation. And again, remember, everybody here is family.